for two weeks in a row, Equalizer has lost ground in the world points race. Can the Carolina Crusher continue to lay on the pressure? There's a new driver in USA 1. And then, Powerhouse Modified Tractor coming up. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas, welcoming you to Tough Tracks with the superstars of Monster Truck Racing. We're in the pits right now with the Clydesdale and Bennett Clark doing some polishing up on his truck. We're about to take him inside, but before we do, Bennett, I've got to ask you about the chicken over my shoulder. Come here a second, buddy. What's the deal with the chicken and his broken leg, too? Oh, well, about 12 races ago, we decided we'd change our luck, try something different, get somebody to ride with me, see if it changed my luck. So I put it on there about 12 races ago. It's been bringing me good luck ever since. <laughs> but he's a trooper. He's hanging in there. You're hanging in there, too. You've been from Toronto to Anaheim, California with the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. It's nice to be home, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. It's nice to be home. Maybe we'll win it tonight for everybody. He's going to have a lot of fans cheering for him in Atlanta's Omni. There's a lot of the best in the sport today ready to go after him, though. Army Armstrong's trackside to set up the action. Well, thanks, Scott. We're standing in the middle of the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, where last week Scott Stevens took a big win, the third win this year on the Monster Truck Challenge Series. However, one of the differences, it was indoors. As the series winds down, we're going indoors for the last few events. This has got to make you feel good winning indoors as we get ready to wrap up this year and start off 1990. Yeah, you know, indoors is going to really do a lot of decision changing next year because we're going to, the point season will start indoors. You know, we're running good indoors and a lot of guys are running good outdoors. It's going to hurt them indoors. And we ran pretty good outdoors this year. If we can come in and, and, and do it again indoors, you know, we'll be in the right direction. When you built the truck, you actually came in late in the season. You weren't even a player for the national championship, but right now you're playing havoc with the bottom five in the top ten. Can you finish in the top ten, even though you started so late in the year? Yeah, I think we're 16 races behind, but I think we should end up, you know, realistically maybe eighth and we could do a little better if the truck will hold together all right thank you scott and ladies and gentlemen stay tuned as chris chapman's going to tell us what else we're going to be watching on tough tracks today thanks army not going to be taking any chances with safety here at the omni if you'll take a look over my shoulder you'll notice some huge bales of hay that have been set up at the very end of the track that's just in case the monster trucks get a little out of hand during this racing also above me an entire section of seats are blocked off no one's going to be sitting there also for safety purposes also, Army, we're going to be off to Conacook, New Hampshire, where multi-engine modified tractors are going to be competing for precious points as the 1989 Redman TNT All-American Pulling Series is winding down. You're going to be seeing stars like Mike Piper and Just Add Dirt, as well as Tim Engler in Mission Impossible competing. It's going to be some dynamite action. Don't miss it. On the TNT Monster Truck Challenge coming into today's action at the Omni, Equalizer's lead is 691 to 657, 34 points over the Crusher. And USA 1 and Gravedigger are pretty safe, so is Nightlife in that number 5 spot. John Breeze Mad Dog, consistent all year, number 6, no problem is 7th, and it's Clydesdale, Wild Hair, and the retired Awesome Kong trying to hang in the top 10 on the season points here for the TNT Monster Trucks in 1989. Well, we're going to go to qualifying action here at the Omni and look at some of the highlights in qualification. And Army Armstrong, King Crunch, proved to be the fastest of the lot. We'll watch his run right here. Well, last week, Scott Stevens proved that this truck will run indoors as well as outdoors. Now, for the people familiar with racing, it's the same difference as short track racing as super speedway racing. There is a difference. Stevens has a handle on it inside Atlanta, Georgia. Looking good for the second week in a row, Scott. Full-length victory on a short indoor course. Very impressive. And King Crunch with that good run is fast qualifier he'll get the buy carolina crusher will come back and meet mopar magic then we'll see usa one go head to head with nightlife equalizer comes out against the thunder chicken and then other first round action will match the jersey outlaw with no problem in a battle of fords Clydesdale out against Gravedigger, struggling with mechanical problems. We'll talk about that later. And to round it out, Buffalo Tremor and Mad Dog, while Stomper goes up against Wild Hair. Coming up next, it'll be Carolina Crusher and Mopar Magic to get things going in a Tar Heel tussle right here on Tough Tracks. Don't go anywhere. The great action's coming up. Tough Tracks 
Voice is brought to you in part by the National Dairy Board. About the best thing you could drink right now to do your body good is a tall, cold glass of milk. Grow for it. Tough Tracks in the TNT Monster Truck Challenge, enjoying one of the great cities in the world, Atlanta, Georgia. You see the skyline of Atlanta, and of course, the Atlanta Omni, one of the great spectacles in the city, hosts the TNT Monster Trucks this week with indoor monster truck racing action. As promised a moment ago, Army, our first matchup will send Carolina Crusher up against that Dodge, Mopar Magic and Gary Wiggins. Two North Carolina guys, Gary Wiggins out of Williamston and Gary Porter out of Wadesboro. Well, Scott, you said it's going to be a Tar Heel tussle. Well, they are from North Carolina. That's the neutral ground. Then they separate one Chevrolet, one driving the awesome Dodge-powered vehicle. Chevrolet currently number two international point chase. That's Gary Porter, yellow truck, far side of the screen. Wiggins trying to put an upset win in his pocket for the Dodge people and see what's going to happen. Wow, Porter making it look easy, Scott. Easy one for Carolina Crusher as Gary Porter gets the victory over Mopar Magic each win. Gary Porter, hope, continues to get him closer to the season point leader, David Morris' equalizer. Army's over with Gary right now. Gary, this qualifying tonight was really spooky. All the big guns seem to qualify in the top bracket. That's going to put you against Keen Crunch in that next round. Well, last time we raced, he beat me. I've been studying the course a little bit and made some adjustments on the truck, and I think I can take the win from him. Brand new driver for the beaten and battered USA One. His name is Steve Wilkie. Army got a chance to talk with him a little bit earlier and asked him how much the former driver of USA One, Rod Litzow, has been able to help him in preparing for this race. Oh, he's a great help. Uh, just negotiating the dirt mound is the main thing. Uh, and simply driving the truck, shift points, uh, what, how much throttle to use on the dirt mound, different things like that. Steve Wilkie, ready to go at it. His opponent will be nightlife. Dave Wysorek out of Grand Island, Nebraska. Well, Wilkie's got some big shoes to fill here, Scott, but he believes he can do it. And also, Rod Litzow believes he is definitely capable of driving a truck just as good as Litzow is. Litzow stepping down this week, trying to recoup a little bit for some injuries. And look at this, USA 1. All right, Wilkie takes his first win, Scott. Steve looks very good. Excellent run for Steve Wilkie in USA 1. And thumbs up from Rod Litzow, the former driver of the truck. So Wilkie puts nightlife away and will go into the second round as he advances along with Carolina Crusher. Steve Wilkie gets the victory and then USA 1, or what's left of USA 1. Steve, the run looked awfully smooth out there. Yeah, it felt really good, Army. Uh, it's the first time I've ever negotiated the dirt mound uh, in competition, and uh, it feels really good. I'm looking forward to it. You got confidence in the truck for the next round? We're going to run it, don't she falls. You know who you're going against in the next round? The uh, winner of the Equalizer Thunder Chicken race. We're here. You're right in the middle of the big time. Good luck to you. Thanks, Army. Well, Army, you hit it when you're talking to Steve. USA 1 comes out, gets the win, and may have to face Equalizer in the second round if Equalizer does as you would expect him to. He's got to be a heavy favorite over Thunder Chicken. The upper bracket is really heavily weighted. King Crunch, Carolina Crusher, USA 1 have already advanced, and Equalizer may join them in the upper bracket quarterfinal round. Scott, for those people not familiar with why we keep talking about upper and lower brackets, remember, you qualify the top half or the quick half goes into the runs a slower half of the field so it's to your advantage to qualify quick because first round that'll let you go against the slower vehicle however that'll turn around on you in second round this is first round action let's see what equalizer can do with the thunder chicken david morrison the equalizer gets the win stopper has been a big surprise today he qualified second fastest marvin smith said he wants to win it i tell you i like to beat all of them I, you know i'm at the point right now you know there's nobody here that i just want to beat them all i'm ready truck racing in the Omni in Atlanta. No problem, and John Moore will battle someone else from the Ford camp. Mike Wise, Jersey Outlaw. The Tennessee Ford, no problem against the Jersey Ford of Mike Wine. That'll be a good matchup, Army. Well, Mike Wine's in the program. He qualified at a 5.23. Then the no problem Ford rolls out. He's strong. He went 6.00, but the qualifying puts the two strongest Fords against each other. One of the big names in the Ford camp is going out in this round. Who's it going to be? Better yet, who's going to stay alive to come back and battle these Chevrolets in the second round? Close, close 
a Jersey outlaw by about a half of a wheel well comes away and then touches the hay at the end of the course here in the Omni. The victory to Mike Wines with the Jersey outlaw who may have gotten himself a pretty good draw tonight in that bottom bracket gets himself a first round win. Here's Mike with Army. Well, Mike Wine qualifying kind of worked out real good for you. You wound up in the bottom half of the bracket. All the big guys are sitting in the top of this thing having a war. You're looking awfully good right now. Yeah, I'm trying my best. I went out there and qualified against Gary Porter, which is a tough competitor, so he made me run hard. It made me run good, made me run good this round. You have yet to put that first win under your belt. You've been to the final once. Are you going to be able to make it to the final here in Atlanta tonight? I'm trying. I'm trying the best I can. I'll push your truck as hard as it'll go against every one of these Chevys. If we handed out the trophies on crowd applause and popularity, this guy would be taking it home right now. He is the hottest thing in motorsports today, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger. But kind of the other story to the popularity of the Grave Digger is the fact that by running so hard and building that popularity army, he's really had trouble keeping his equipment together. And tonight, broken again with only front-wheel drive, Clydesdale and Bennett Clark, a big advantage in this race. Yeah, he really laid all his cards on the table in qualifying, but it cost him the rear-wheel drive. Now, front-wheel drive is... It's not going to hurt him. The word will hurt him. It'll be right on the starting line. It won't hurt him on the finish line in the track. But you got to remember, six seconds, and this ball game's over. Right there, you can see a lot of wheel speed. However, the Clydesdale hometown boy goes to that next round. He'll take it any way he can get it. Not worried about the circumstances. Bennett Clark takes the win. Well, Bennett Clark, you just put one of the big guys in this sport on the trailer. Uh, yeah, the drive digger, he come to Atlanta, he's messing with the wrong person. He's messing with the Clydesdale here. From just up the road in Powder Springs, Georgia, Bennett Clark beats the grave digger. Well, Scott, this is a super big event for Clark. One of the reasons being the Hardy Chevrolet people sponsored the event in the Atlanta area. They're also the same people that build the horsepower. Hardy Chevrolet builds the engines for the Clydesdale. He's going to the next round. Who else is going to advance out of this first round? We'll find out right here. Buffalo Tremor out of New York. John Kwasniewski on the right of your screen against Missouri's Mad Dog from Jefferson City, Missouri, John Breen. Rookie, far side, one of the veterans is on the near side of the camera, Mad Dog. 14-year monster truck driver, the Buffalo Tremor. First year out in the big leagues. What's going to happen? It's Buffalo Tremor, Jefferson City, Missouri, the home of the Breeze, the home of one of the greatest high school football programs in the country. But today, Buffalo Tremor gets the upper hand. The win to Johnny Cage. John Kwasniewski advances to the quarterfinal round. You can see Army's caught up with him. Let's go down there now. Well, Johnny, the truck really looks to be taking some strange, I mean strange, bounces coming off of that hill. Now, we're not really used to running indoors. This is the first time the truck's running indoors, and we kind of designed it for outdoors, so we have to do a little changes. What kind of changes are you going to do real quick? That, right now, I can't really do nothing because it's in the suspension, and the, I can't work it out right now. I just have to go, to go with the flow. Army, you and I have been talking earlier about the fact that this bracket looks weighted to the top with Crusher, Crunch, USA, and Equalizer all in the upper bracket. The reason it has fallen like this is because the wild card is right here. And I'm not talking about Bob Breen and Wild Hair. I mean Marvin Smith and Stomper, second fastest qualifier tonight. Yo, know, Marvin Smith has always had the capability of doing that, but he's had so much breakage problem this year. People have almost forgotten about the Stomper, but you got to remember, he's played the game a long time. This Missouri drive lines up next to another Missouri driver, both of them in Chevrolet, who's going to the next round, Stopper or Wild Hair? Stopper wins it easily, so Marvin Smith backs up that great qualifying run with an impressive first round victory. Put Marvin Smith in the quarterfinals. Marvin, what's going on here? Second quick qualifying time tonight. You look smoother than anybody out there. Army, I'm getting tired of losing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we, uh, I'm doing something different tonight. I'm going to a fully automatic transmission. I've been running a manual shift transmission, and apparently I'm not shifting the right point. So I thought, well, I'd try mechanical. Maybe it's a little smarter than I am, a little faster. But most of all, I'm just tired of losing. I want to win for a while. I've had a rough season. Thanks, Army. Up next, the most powerful vehicles in motorsports on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. TNT's All-American Pulling Series in Conococke, New Hampshire for the big boys, the modified tractors. Here's Fred Freeman's Mean Mistreater. Now, Army earlier, Fred was the test pull, so he came out, broke his front wheel. As the test puller, he gets to come back. He's got Ken Lamont's Midnight Express front wheels on here. He also has something else. That's a whole lot of heat, no Chevrolet engines. And look at the horsepower. He's made, look at, oh, full pull. He literally muscles 
it past the 300 foot mark. That's a second run on that tractor tonight, Scott. The sled is now official. Full pull for Fred Freeman. Let's look at the points coming into the action here in New Hampshire. Tim Engler, Mission Impossible, leading the way in the Big Bucks. Redman TNT All-American pulling series. Just Ed Dirt sits in the second spot with Mike Piper. Then it's the Walsh Brothers Irish Challenger third. John Heilman and Levi Garrett. John Powell is fifth. Then there's Freeman and the Mead Mist Reader tied with the Virginia Farmer for six. Sudden Thunder and Pat Friel's Dollar Devil, Mr. Chevy, rounding out the top ten. That's the way the points are coming in. So you see it's very important for Fred Freeman. That full pull puts him into a possible pull-off or maybe in a position to win, depending on what this guy does. This is the story right here. Kim the current national points leader. Look at all the engines. Look at the horsepower. The fight is phenomenal in New Hampshire. You can tell the way he literally powers the front end up. 160 mile an hour wheel speed. 291 and change. That is going to hurt. Boy, Fred Freeman really looking good now. He's got a full pull, and the big favorite coming in, Tim Engler, upset, doesn't take it out. Actually, what's happening is when it got crooked early, we had to get on one brake. When you do that, and the other tire grows double the speed. If you, In other words, if you stop one tire, the other tire is going to go twice as fast. So what we actually was doing was speeding one tire up and then the other tire, and the turning the kind of gear ratio we are, it makes the tires grow just like a top fuel dragster does. And it was just growing too much out there tonight. Right. So Engler will not be in a pull-off if there is one. Right now he's second to Freeman, but many more to come, including Mike Piper and Just Add Dirt. The Piper relies on the hybrid engine based out of California. They call them areas engines. Plenty of horsepower working the left lane to perfection, Scott. He comes across the track. Not quite. Doesn't quite get it out of there. 295 and change. So he did not get a full pull, but he did beat Tim Engler. Let's see if Mike's happy about that at least. Well, I'm pleased with it. Uh, the track wouldn't take a lot of power tonight. I couldn't use what I had. Uh, being ahead of Tim was quite an accomplishment. So, uh, I'm happy with that. The guys with the silver legs and the low torque motors are going to make some good passes tonight, it looks like. Again, Mike Piper's just add dirt coming within five feet of a full pull, but not quite enough to get in a pull off. At least for the moment, he stands in second position behind Fred Freeman, who has himself a full pull. Here comes Southern Thunder and Wayne Keefe out of Connecticut. Keep an eye on Keefe because now he's had a chance to watch Eagler and Piper. He will not make the same mistakes they did. Look at that Scott. This guy's going out of here in a big way. A full pull for Sudden Thunder and Wayne Keefe. We now know that we're assured of a pull-off. Fred Freeman's in it, Wayne Keefe's in it. And let's see if Dave Walsh, who's having a fantastic year in the Irish Challenger, can join him. you got to keep an eye on Walsh. He's on the line now. John Heilman sets in the wings waiting. I guarantee you, Walsh, Heilman are going to do the same thing Sudden Thunder did. They're going to run in his track, and they're going out of here big time. Walsh fires the Irish Challenger up, up, and out. Full pull for Irish Challenger and Dave Walsh. You mentioned John Heilman. Here comes Levi Garrett. Well, it's amazing in this sport how a track will come to you and go away from you. It was not there for Engler. It was not there for Piper. You're number one and two in the national points, Jay. These other guys, they flat figure this thing out. You can really see how they're staying in the great groove, and they take it out with plenty to spare. Heilman has done it as well. So John Heilman joins Freeman, Walsh, and Keith in the pull-off. Oh, really, wet sand. The, the, the track is well-prepared. Even though it's wet, or sandy and mealy, it's well-prepared. And this track is taking horsepower and getting good bites. You just, it's a tricky track. It's a driver's track, and I love a driver's track. Army, as we watch the replay, he used the word mealy, I believe, to describe the track. Yeah, that means the track, even though it has moisture, it's loose. It won't go back together. It won't pack. Now, let's keep an eye on this guy coming out, Rick Isley. He took a sabbatical. He used to be a driver. Got away from the driver's seat. He's back in the seat, big time, with the big boy chasing the red man point money. Close to home. Scott, what's he going to do? Sassy, messy. Let's watch him. Guy goes through here like old number nine. Doesn't Another he? full pull put Sassy Massey into the pull off. So it ought to be a dandy pull off. Sassy Massey will be there. Levi Garrett, Ivers Challenger, Sudden Thunder. We'll also see in action Fred Freeman and the Mean Miss Breeder. It's going to be a great pull off. But when we come back, King Crunch against Carolina Crusher. Here's the final from last week. And the rematch is next.
quick stop on the road to determining the world champion of monster truck racing is the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. We've got our quarterfinal round set. Here's Chris Chapman with the pairing. Some of our best racers are in the upper bracket as we head into quarterfinal action. Look at this. Last week's winner, Scott Stevens and King Crunch, going to be facing number two in the points right now, Gary Porter and the Carolina Pressure. Next pairing, USA 1 defending national champion Steve Wilkie driving that truck tonight. Rod Litzow out with some injuries. And he is in the third position in the points race. He takes on David Morris and the Equalizer. And we're bound to have a surprise finalist come out of these bottom pairings. Look at this. Jersey Outlaw taking on the local favorite, Bennett Clark and the Clydesdale. And then we have John Kwasniewski, who recently had a win in Fishersville, Virginia. He'll be driving the Buffalo Trimmer head-to-head -head against Stomper. Chris, you are so right. It really is going to make for something interesting in the final. One of the powerhouses against an upstart. We know that's going to happen just because of the way the brackets are drawn here in Atlanta. And one of the powerhouses is going to go out right now as Scott Stevens and King Crunch, last week's winner, holding that silver flag. Fast qualifier takes on the Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter. Texas puts the Tar Heel on a trailer. Look at that. Scott Stevens for the second week puts number two points, man out of the game. Boy, Atlanta so far has been King Crunch's kind of town. Scott Stevens with the win. You really could have messed up his year with that run. He was trying to pull back on the points. You took him out of this thing. The equalizer still in the elimination. Right. You know, it's going to help, uh, you know, more out with the equalizer a lot. And plus, it's helping us a lot, you know, going home for a few weeks, getting ready for 1990 for the series. Hey, if we go home with a few wins behind us, you know, we'll be really hard to beat next year. There's no doubt he's got a few wins. You can see that silver flag on the back of the truck. That's significant of last week's victory. Here's a guy with several wins, but how beaten and battered is he? Well, I don't know. We're going to see what the truck can do right here. We're talking about USA 1, Steve Wilkie driving Army of Truck, and now it looks kind of like a modified. Well, I'm going to work my way down to Rod Litzow, who normally drives this truck. He is going to be the crew chief tonight, turning the driver's chores over to a very capable Steve Wilkie. We're going to see if we can get Litzow to help us on the call, Scott. Okay, and you know, the opponent is the equalizer. It's somebody Rod knows very well. He's been racing him all year. David Morris. Let's see what Army and Rod think. Rod let's out. Stand with me at the end of the Atlanta Omni truck. You've got a new driver up there. What's going through the mind of that driver and you right now? Well, basically right now, I told him when you're up on the starting line with this hump being indoors, you have to come off that first hill a little bit slower. But he's getting, he's getting used to this, but it is hard coming out that first set. That's where the main part of this whole race is, where you come out the first hill. Let me ask you a question. Is this like any other kind of motorsport? It's a big truck. It's a lot of horsepower, but the most important thing is time in the seat. Yeah, it is. got to get some time back there. He's catching on really fast, you know. That's why we get going. We'll have a good next year. Well, Rod Litzow called that one for you, but the win goes to David Morris and the Equalizer. Army's working his way over now to talk to the point leader. Dave, you got one of the guys that seems to have a handle on this thing, Keen Crunch, in the next round. Yeah, he's running real good. I've figured out now that the left lane is the better lane. So Keen Crunch, will stick, he'll go in this left lane. He'll stick me over in that right lane, but I think I'm going to give him a, a good run this time. The confidence that comes from a lot of victories right there at David Morris. Here's Clydesdale, the hometown boy, trying to take a win over the Jersey Outlaw Ford. But before we get to the race, Bennett Clark's got a big announcement for all the Tough Tracks fans here in Atlanta. Here he is with his fiancée, Jennifer Green. Yes, we're going to get married. It'll be uh, sometime in January, right at the first of January, somewhere along in there. And uh, I'll have a new partner to ride with me down the road. Well, there are the thoughts of Bennett Clark about the marital situation, but let's find out from Jennifer what she thinks it's going to be like joining a very small sorority, the sisters that are married to monster truck drivers. Um, a bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, truer words are never spoken, right? <laughs> a bumpy ride. All right, let's see how bumpy it's going to be for Clydesdale. Here's your Chevrolet Ford matchup, Clydesdale against Jersey Outlaw. Hometown boy going against the Yankee. New Jersey and a Ford on the far side. Georgia Chevrolet, who's it going to be? Oh, it's a close one. Look at this guy. I don't know, Army. Side by side, I do not have any idea. Both drivers had problems shutting the trucks down at the end of the track. It was close. Too close to call. Let's, we're just going to have to wait until they look at it on the video timer. Again, each race goes frame by frame. Obviously, Mike Wine wanting to know who won. Let's watch it here, Army. God, you got to keep in mind, the finish line is the middle right there of the last car. The middle of the last car is the finish line. 
Wow, and you can see how close it is. Our camera is at a little bit of a different angle from the video timer, but it looks like Mike Wine wins it in the Jersey Outlaw Ford. Jersey Outlaw got you just by a scope. Well, he's running real hard. We, uh, I got a little too much air right there. The front end came down a little hard. He made a nice clean jump. He beat me right at the end, but I'll be back. You did a great job in your hometown for your sponsor. We're glad to see you turning this kind of a show. Uh, yeah, I'm glad to do the best I can. My sponsor, my motor man, Mike Hardy, did a great job. We, we're running hard. I'll be back. The Jersey Outlaw ain't going to get the Clydesdale. Buffalo Tremor, John Kwasniewski next out against the surprise of the night. I say surprise because he's having a down year, but the history of that truck, the history of Stauffer, of Gail Mefford, Mike Wett, and now Marvin Smith in the Stauffer is a history of excellence, and it's great to see him having a good run in Atlanta. Yeah, and like he said, it's been a long, tough year for him. He made a change. The change is what he did. He's let the truck work itself. He does not manually shift it. When he engine goes to a certain RPM, he does not pull a lever. He just put it in drive, similar to you and I would with our normal automobile, and the truck is running perfect for him. Something else, in that last interview, the Clydesdale driver is more upset than he was showing on camera. Believe me, he's upset. He still thinks he won that race. We're going to keep an eye on that situation right now. Let's go up to the starting line. You couldn't get any closer than it was. Let's see how close this one plays out. It's Stomper on the right of the screen. Buffalo Trimmer closest to you. That's what cost him, too. Too much air for Buffalo Tremor, a smooth run for Stomper, and Marvin Smith makes it into the semifinals where he'll meet the Jersey Outlaw Ford. Marvin, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, son. It's working. Well, it's a rainy night in Georgia, isn't it? <laughs> We're running here. Uh, well, I'm more than staying on it, pouring cold to it, and let her fly. The transmission change you made seems to really work for you. Yeah, it does. I've, I've got it set for about 5,600, and it seems to be cracking pretty good, but she died right there when I hit the cars. I think it's got a lot to do with the weather outside, and you know, everything's just wet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what he's talking about in reference to the weather outside, yes, we are indoors. It's dry here, but it's a torrential rainstorm going on outside. The air density out there has got everybody messed up. Right now, he's got the hot hand. Let's see if he can hold on and stay alive in Atlanta. Let's do it. You get it. Tough tracks in the TNT All-American Pulling Series in Conococke, New Hampshire. Fred Freeman will be first up in our pull-up in the Mean Mistreater. Five of these big, bad, modified tractors in the pull-up. Each one is going to be running mega horsepower, 100-plus wheel speed. One difference is Freeman has already made two runs, a lot of heat. No, he's not heating the engine. He has hot engines right now. Oh, no, he's out of there again, I mean, That can't happen. He took it out easy. Yeah, he backed out of the throttle at the 290. He had so much ground speed, he just ran it out the end. Oh, my, the sled just was not right. You can see the officials going to the back, checking the, the gearbox and, and, of course, the transfer case, the weight, everything, but something was not right. Okay, discussion goes on with Freeman. This can be a dangerous situation. Everybody is interested in solving this problem. Track officials and drivers. Fred there with his buddy Ken Lamont and with track official Tom Carter. I guarantee you, Fred is one unhappy camper about this situation. Let's get the word right from the horse's mouth. Well, they think that all the rest of them is going to run out the end too, which they probably would, and they're going to take that hook away and make me hook again, I believe. They're going to see if they can't heavy up the sled, but... I just didn't see no more room for weights in that sled, and I don't know what they're going to do. I'm, I had a little heated discussion with them because I'm getting a little tired of having to hook all the time. You know, I want to make a good pass, and that was an excellent run I just made, and I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think that's, I don't think any sled is going to stop the nine modified on this track tonight. What they've done, Army, is they have changed the gear in the sled, and watch how fast this box is going to come up. Yeah, they make the weight catch you quicker in the track. A minute ago, Freeman banged it out to 300 foot mark. Look at this, struggling to get on the other side of the 180, stops it at a 181. So Wayne Keefe and Sudden Thunder now sets the distance the others have to try and beat in the pull-off, 181 feet, 3 inches. Let's go over and ask Wayne Keefe if he can explain exactly what they've done to that sled and how it's affected it. Well, uh, they, first of all, they put 9,500 pounds into the box, and the first fellow went out faster than he did the first time. So they brought it back and uh, they changed the gears in it so the box would top out quickly at 150 feet. And I felt it hit me at 150 feet because I only got about 30 more and it hit me like a ton of bricks. Now we know that 
the sled is certainly heavy enough and geared to where they're not going to just take it out. But Army is Fred Freeman and me, Miss Treater Hooks. All I can say is if Fred doesn't win this thing, I know he's going to feel cheated because he had an excellent run and the sled just wasn't right in the first round look, of ball. Look, look at the tractor right now. Look at the bottom of the tractor. That's an indication the engines are too hot before he ever started to run. Freeman is really tearing up a lot of equipment right now. Look at that. Oh, oh. he cooked some motors and is going to be miffed. Oh, my goodness. You can see the smoke pouring on his fourth hook of the night, just a 164.43. Not only is he not going to win, but it looks like an expensive top five finish. I don't know. I guess I should have had more sense and go out there and hook the third time. But, you know, it's a pretty tight points race. And I don't know. I'm pretty upset with the whole matter right now, to tell you the truth. I usually are in pretty, pretty calm puller, but I'm not tonight. Yeah, I feel like I got the raw shaft this evening. Watch the replay, you'll see the engines cook, and Army, you, you've got to go back to not having the weight box right for Fred on that pull-off. It really killed him. Well, also, an another factor here was he drew the number one position, was a test puller, and had to pull twice to start off with. I have never seen anybody make four runs in a night. Who's going after him right now? Looks like the Irish challenger, Scott. Dave Walsh trying to beat the distance laid down earlier by Keith. He didn't get it, 159.12. So it's the Irish challenger and Dave Walsh, not quite enough to get into the first spot. John Heilman, Levi Garrett will now come after Sudden Thunder's distance of 181 and three inches. Sudden Thunder powered by Chevrolet. So the Levi Garrett. Heilman been around the game a long time, trying to go to the other side of a 181. He's got it. 209, 4.6 inches. John Heilman and Levi Garrett has taken the lead with one more to go in the pull-off. Yeah, but look who it is, the sassy Massey. He relies on the Masano engine, the JP All-American racing engines. You talk about horsepower, he's got it. Can he make it stick to the track? 209 what he's going after, Scott. He's not going to do it. Heilman takes a big one in New Hampshire. The hometown boy in New Hampshire, Isley, comes up a little short at 190. He finishes second, but the win impressively to John Heilman and Levi Garrett. I think we just, I think we just did it. I think we did. He got crossed up at about 75 or 100 feet. Did you see him make that turn to side? The game was over. We had him. And excited, very understandably so, John Heilman gets the win. Levi Garrett wins it, Sassy Massey second. Sudden Thunder, then the hard luck Fred Freeman and Mean Miss Treater finishing fourth. Dave Walsh fifth in the pull-off in the Irish Challenger. Now, the effect that has on the point, Jim Engler dropped out early. So Engler obviously had a big point lead coming into the action here in New Hampshire. Let's look at the board and see where it leaves Mission Impossible right now. It's cut it down to 75 points over Just Add Dirt. The Irish challenger, Walsh, making a move. So is Levi Garrett with the win here. A strong fourth. John Powell sits fifth, but right now not really battling for that championship. Freddie Freeman is sixth. Then Sudden Thunder, Virginia Farmer, your defending national champion, Pat Friels and Dollar Devils, and Sassy Massey with a good run here today in the number 10 spot. On the TNT All-American Pulling Series, the modified tractors running for those big bucks. Bennett Clark back in Atlanta's Omni disputing the last finish of of his race against Jersey Outlaw. We'll talk to Bennett in a moment. The TNT Monster Truck Challenge, the major league of monster truck racing. Here's our controversial moment tonight in Atlanta's Omni. Bennett Clark, you're seeing it from the reverse angle now. And Clydesdale and Jersey Outlaw, God, I don't know how you can call it from this angle either. It is that close, and Bennett Clark of Clydesdale is flash disputing the call that gave the win to Jersey Outlaw. Well, Bennett, we noticed you're up there. You got a question on that call. What is it? Well, the way I look at it, I won the race. It was real close, but I believe I had maybe two or three inches on him. You went back up to the TNT crew. You, you look at the race. Did they stop action it for you? They stopped back into one frame at a time. It got right down to it. He keeps saying that he beat me, but hell, I don't think he beat me. The way it looks like to me, I have like two or three inches on him right when we meet the line. As we pass the line, he passes me three or four inches just as we pass the line. I don't like it at all. But at the finish line, you were the man. Yeah, I was the one at the finish line. They can put the guy up north up there in the front, but 
I know I want it. All right. I think Ben is trying to make this another civil war. We're talking about that Yankee from up north. But, you know, Army, if you surveyed everybody who watched that video replay, I'll bet half of them think Jersey Outlaw won and half think Clydesdale it, won. It was definitely close. And that's why we have the replay. The decisions they made, they're going to live and die by it. But Bennett Clark, he knows how to work that crowd. Believe me, he get them fired up against that northern boy. Hey, look who's coming out now. A couple of T-trucks. Both of them Chevrolets. One from Texas, one from Tennessee. Last week's winner on the far side going against your current national points champion. Scott, what does it look like from your angle? Tennessee's equalizer, David Morris, against the Texas King Crunch. Oh, my. Another close one, Scott. Boy, too, under six-second runs this evening. Too close to call as they cross together at that finish line. Again, the finish line is midway through that final car. And right now, we're waiting on the video timer. And there you see it, by about a half a wheel, Equalizer gets the victory. David Morris puts away last week's winner, Scott Stevens and King Crunch. Put Equalizer into the Monster Smash Final. All right, the word we get is that, David, you took the win on that round. It took him a long time to decide it. They had to rerun it. You got the win. I didn't know. I was worried about stopping for this wall and keeping my truck out of uh, Scott's truck, just keeping everything under control. Back to the pit area. You're going to the final. Scott Stevens, nothing to be ashamed of this week. Yeah, it's the quickest pass we ran of the weekend. It just wasn't, you know, wasn't meant to be. You know, we're getting there. We were real happy with the weekend, though. There's a guy who's so far happy with what's happening in the Omni. Marvin Smith, the Stumper Chevrolet, second fastest qualifier. Now in his first semifinal in a long time, and if he wins here, it'll be his first championship matchup in quite a while in the Stumper. He takes on the Jersey Outlaw Ford and Mike Wine. Mike Wine, rookie driver out of New Jersey. White Ford from the north. He'll be going up against the Missouri base, the Missouri Raider, if you will, Stumper Chevrolet, the veteran driver Smith doing the chores. Who's it going to be? Ford, Chevrolet, Missouri, New Jersey. Scott, you take it from your angle. They're off. Oh, something went wrong with Stomper. Something went wrong with Marvin Smith. What a bad break for a guy who's had a tough year. Stomper was having his best run in months, and he broke right on the cars. The wins of Jersey Outlaw. Mike Wine will go to the Monster Smash against another Chevy. David Morris is equalizing. Mike Wine is final time in Atlanta, and you're going to be there representing the Ford team. Yeah. Equalizer's been hiding from me all year. Now I got him indoors. I couldn't get him outdoors, but I got him indoors now, and it's my track. You really believe in yourself. This is it. This is going to be your first win. This is it. This is going to be the first win of the year. He, he's got lane choice. Does that bother you at all? Doesn't bother me at all. I'll run any side of the track he wants to put me on. I'm ready for him. When we come back, it's Ford versus Chevrolet as the Jersey Outlaw meets world points leader David Morris and the Equalizer. Don't you dare go away. Tough tracks, you see the superstars of monster truck racing battling for the world championship on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. And earlier, Mike Wine said he wants your point leader, David Morris. Well, David, Mike Wine made no bones about it. He wants you in the worst way right now. Well, he's going to get me every, he's going to get every ounce of the equalizer tonight. What lane are you going to be going into? You do get lane choice. I'm going to come back over to the left side. He said it didn't make any difference. He's going to hammer you hard in Atlanta. How do you feel? I feel like he'll be looking at the back of my truck. While they get ready for the monster smash, it's time for our exciting weekly feature, the crunch of the week. Hold on to your seats for the amazing crunch of the week. Brought to you by Micro Machines. The number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. The crunch of the week. Watertown, New York. The Grave Digger. Hitting them hard. Up, up, look out, Dennis Anderson. And did you see Awesome Kong in the background? Watch him one more time. It's Grave Digger closest to you. Awesome Kong in the far lane. Both qualifying for the crunch of the week. Scott, high get? side net is fast, but there's only one way to live through this. You've got to drive out of it. And that's exactly what Anderson did. Anderson, eyes right, awesome Kong, straight up. The crunch of the week is brought to you by Micro Machines, the world's most collectible toys from Galoo.
It's time for the Monster Smash Equalizer against the Jersey Outlaw. One's been here many times. He'll be driving the Chevrolet, the red truck. One has not been here but once. Wants to put his first win under his belt. Time for the final shot. But more importantly for David Morris, he wouldn't have cared what make you put out beside him. This is another key victory on what he hopes is a march to the world championship of monster truck racing. Army is caught up with your winner. Dave, is this one as sweet as the first one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I needed that win bad because uh, I need to stay way out as far as I can away from that Carolina Crusher. He's, he's hot on my heels. But I'm gonna do my best to put him away this year. How about Mike Wine? You can't say enough about this kid. He gave you everything you wanted out here tonight. Uh, Mike Wine, you never underestimate the Jersey Outlaw. You're up there. Can you stay there? I think I can. If uh, we can uh, keep the truck together and running good, I believe we can make it. What a big week this has been on tough tracks for David Morris and the Equalizer. When you remember that Carolina Crusher was beaten in the quarterfinals by King Crunch, and then David Morris and the Equalizer with an impressive full-length victory over the Jersey Outlaw Ford in the Monster Smash Final. But I tell you what, Scott, Mike Wine showed a lot of people tonight he is going to be a tough monster truck. The Jersey Outlaw, watch him. Okay, Army, well, here's your chance. Let's get over there and let Army talk right now to Mike Wine. Mike Wine, congratulations on getting to the final. Nothing to be ashamed of. You ran an awfully good race all night long. No, nah, I'm not ashamed at all. Anytime there's a Ford against a Chevrolet instead of two Chevrolets in a final, I'm proud. Since I'm one of them, I'm very proud. So, You're really getting the hang of this monster truck race, aren't you? You're kind of new to it. You've only been doing it since January, your second final. You could really be in the middle of this picture for 1990. Yeah, I'm getting pretty good confidence. Uh, the truck's a little bit of a dinosaur. It's three years old. So next year, we build our new one. I'll be ready for it. They better be ready for me. The owner of the Jersey Outlaw, Nick Rossi, loves his driver, Mike Wine. Hey, so does Gary Cook, the owner of the Equalizer, love his man, David Morris, because Equalizer has padded that points lead over Carolina Crusher. The top five remaining the same, just Equalizer opening up some room at the top. Now, in the second five, you're going to see a new name popping up this week. Scott Stevens and King Crunch enters the top ten. Army, you talked to him earlier. He was talking about finishing eighth, but you look at those points. Seventh is not out of the realm of possibility. He gave everybody a 19-event head start and is in the top 10. Hey, keep an eye on this guy. King Crunch looking very good. You know, next week here on Tough Tracks, we're going to see a rematch of this week's thrilling semifinal between King Crunch and Equalizer. Now, you know, when we watch these two guys go head-to-head -head here today, it was a match that really came down once again to the video timing camera. Having to look at that photo finish, we know they're going to square off again next week right here on Tough Tracks. Well, Scott, who would ever thought high-tech the word high-tech is going to get involved in monster truck racing, but that's exactly what the sport is coming to. Scott Stevens with a computer-controlled key crunch is flexing his muscle. Equalizer with the new suspension is flexing his muscle. We heard Mike Wine out of the Ford camp. They're building new for 90. Wow, look down the road. There is David Morris, this week's winner in the Equalizer, grabbing the silver flag. He'll carry until next week here on Tough Tracks when you'll see him and all the superstars back in action on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Until then, for Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman, I'm Scott Douglas. Look for us next week right here on Tough Tracks.